So, um, so this topic um, is flipped classroom models and online teaching. And I actually think that you know online teaching is uh, perfectly poised for flipped classroom models. Even though, you know, obviously this can apply to in person teaching um, as well and sort of all forms. Um, but I wanted to kind of start talking about, you know, what is the flipped classroom model? Um, and then let me, I'm not sure if you guys can also see this, but let me reduce that. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to just start talking about the flipped classroom model and have some discussion around that and then also talk about how it's, you know, can be applied online or in, you know, the various um, you know, classes that you guys teach. Um, so, um, and I did also, by the way, uh, start looking at, um, you know, some scholarly research, you know, that I'll share at the end. Um, in some of, you know, the, the different fields, you know, if people here like nursing, law, um, medicine, uh, social work, um, obviously where I'm, where I am, um, you know, so that, you know, there are some extra resources and, um, you know, things that articles that you all can look at that might be more particular to, you know, your field. Um, so just really briefly, you know, talking about what is a flipped classroom and have, does anybody have experience with flipped classrooms, with doing a flipped classroom already in your teaching? Um, and I can't see the chat if somebody wants to let me know. Or... There's nothing in there, Ashley. Okay, no worries. So is this new to everybody? Or Christina said, yes, I think. James, great. Um, so, yeah, so a flipped classroom is generally one um, where the first, and this is, you know, going to the definition and kind of like the originators of flipped classroom. It's one in where the first exposure to learning a concept, so the knowledge um, in the course occurs outside of the classroom. And then class time, you know, consists mainly of processing learning in a more active way. Um, and so this I pulled from, you know, Vanderbilt. Um, from their info on flipping the classroom. Um, but I also think of it as being way more than that. Um, you know, it's not just that the, the students read the lecture or view the lecture outside of class and then come to class for discussion. Um, it's also where learning is really student-centered and it's really student-driven. Um, there, I know Isabel, Isabelita just said something. I, I couldn't quite catch what that was. Um, there are also accountability measures that are really important because they guarantee student preparation and help with student engagement. Um, and then the didactic materials and resources that are used are, are really, it's really thought through how they're connected to skills that students are expected to demonstrate, you know, for learning in the course. Um, and so that's especially where I think that online learning is really well poised for that because it's something that we do already, you know, when we're considering instructional design for a course, we're already thinking about, you know, how, how well aligned are these materials and, and resources so that there is no fluff and so that everything is a lot more streamlined. Um, and this image right here, it's basically from, I think this one was from the University of Michigan, um, you know, talking about the differences between a lecture-based approach and the flipped classroom. So just to help compare a little bit and help sort of wrap our, wrap our minds around what is a flipped classroom um, and why, you know, why a flipped classroom is different from a lecture-based classroom. So in a lecture before class, you know, students are reading or preparing for class um, but are they really doing the reading? You know, there's always that challenge of, you know, not knowing if students are coming to class prepared. And in, you know, the lecture again, you know, uh, in that class time, faculty are lecturing and that's where students are gaining, you know, oftentimes their first exposure to some material and content um, and information from the faculty. Um, and, and also, and I'll talk about this a little more later, the faculty is the authority on that content in a lecture-based approach to teaching. 
And then after class, students, you know, take home that knowledge with them, and then they have to practice and apply the material in a setting where the, the faculty is, is not there to engage with them. Flip classroom is the opposite of that. So students are getting that, you know, first knowledge lecture um, before class, and that's where they're really getting the first exposure. So the lecture, other materials, videos, reading, and then in class, they're more doing, um, here it says, oh, well, before class, um, you know, there might be some kind of assignment to ensure preparation. So that's kind of the accountability measure. And then in class, there's a lot of collaboration and practice and applying, you know, the material. Um, and that's where a lot more than just knowledge is produced. Skills are really produced in that in-class activity and the faculty member um, or instructor can be there to guide student learning and really to sort of serve as a mentor, you know, or a, or a coach in a way. Takes a lot of onus off the faculty and I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So um, benefits to flipped classrooms, you know, as I just mentioned, this, it shifts the onus for student learning from the professor to the student um, in a pretty dramatic way. It increases student participation. And I would argue, you know, from my experience, you know, using it, you know, I, I instantly saw 100% participation. Um, you know, so those quiet students in the room are participating, they're engaging. Um, so it increases student engagement. And so these things, participation and engagement, we know that that has direct implications for increasing student learning. Um, and just to throw it out there, the professor feels a lot more sane. Um, for me, it was really a very pleasant experience um, teaching a flipped classroom style. You find that your students make friends with one another. They have a lot more interaction with one another. Um, and this last bullet point I threw in there, just especially for um, social work faculty, helps disrupt the power structure of a traditional classroom. So um, just some quotes that I thought um, were helpful to really considering and thinking about, you know, what a flipped classroom is um, from Michigan and from Berkeley. Michigan, you know, in their information, it says, you know, class time is devoted to engaged learning. And that's really crucial to keep in mind. And um, for Berkeley, um, I love this quote, an instructor can be a guide on the side rather than a sage on the stage. Um, so, um, and does anyone have questions? And, um, or Robin, can you let me know if there are any questions or anything at this point? Or anyone yeah. want to ask? Excuse me, there are no questions in the chat, but Isabel Lita did add she has used role playing format and that worked out pretty nicely. Great, good, perfect. Um, yeah, so just talking about, and can you also tell me what time it is? Because I can't see the clock on my, but I just want to make sure I'm sticking to time. 1240, 1240. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I see Kevin. It just popped up shared um, that Jim also is using flip classroom. So um, types of flip classrooms, and I've seen these um, kind of, you know, written out differently, different places. So, um, you know, I've seen lists of types of flip classrooms that are a lot longer than this, but I wanted to sort of distill it down to two things. Either you're fully flipping the classroom all the time, or it's a partial flip where you're um, pinpointing a little more the specific types of content that you're flipping. Um, so fully flipped, you know, and I think we've all kind of seen this in sort of microcosm. So a workshop, um, a writing workshop, an art workshop, anything um, like that. A lab setting is really a flipped classroom um, where the learning is experienced in, you know, the setting. Um, a team learning project or a group learning project, and simulation or role play, um, I think can be thought of as a flipped classroom, and especially when, you know, in, in a simulation activity, like for nursing, you know, you might have a didactic lesson ahead of time and then go into the simulation. So this would be really without the, di without the didactic, you know, how might a simulation occur where it's more student-centered um, without 
you know, um, having instructions um, that are um, a lot more directed, pardon me, <clears throat> a lot more directed on, you know, how to apply the learning where students are really uh, figuring that out um, on their own. So a lot more, um, I guess, participation in terms of, you know, how the students thinking about how they're going to learn and them uh, engaging in the learning activity. So a partial flipped classroom. So, um, you know, might basically this could be a way to sort of start flipping your classroom without fully committing to it. So you might, um, you know, I saw one suggestion that was, you know, maybe just one lecture a week, you know, if you have class twice a week just doing a flipped classroom for one of those weeks. But it may be thinking through what are the particular um, aspects of a course that you want to flip. So it may only be, you know, for writing assignments and not for um, other types of, of skill demonstration. So you might create um, small groups for discussion or role play of like case studies or scenarios. Um, analyzing readings, things like that. And if people have other ideas, you know, certainly um, you can mention those. So yeah, just talking a little bit about from our own experiences, I wanted to, you know, um, just have some people share, you know, in our own schooling, you know, what is our experience with um, situations where the learning um, really may have been flipped. And I, I did see something, um, on, on one of the sites I was looking at, uh, like a Q and A, where one of the questions was, "I'm an English professor. Isn't this just a fancy term for what we've always been doing?" Um, which kind of made me chuckle because that is sort of like the Iowa model of a writing workshop um, or a seminar class. Um, and me, I was thinking about in college. You know, I had a Shakespeare class where the way we learned Shakespeare was that we each had to direct a scene. Um, so we were the producers of knowledge in that way. So I just wanted to maybe have some people just share, you know, what are other ways that you have um, experienced, you know, this, this type of learning that was really students really producing the learning themselves. Actually, I can share a course I'm developing right now is to teach spiritual competence for mental health graduate students. And so they're going to use online modules where I've got texts and videos and all that. And they'll watch that before they come to class. And then the instructor will facilitate things like role plays to develop whatever skills they had let, learned about that week online and reading. Um, so that will be a fully flipped classroom. <laughs> Anybody else? Or anybody who's done like simulation or things like that? This is Diane. I will share at the School of Social Work. We, the field liaisons conduct the seminar classes and a large portion of the class is discussion on classroom learning, field placement. So we spend time talking about the process recordings monthly reports, interaction with clients. And so that's a lot of student engagement and they learn from each other during those um, sessions. I saw some other things oh, that Christina had popped up about School of Pharmacy or something. Yeah, I was waiting for her. So pharmacy, she's uh, at a note here. Pharmacy and medicine are using online team-based learning approaches to flip some of their classes. Uh, for interested faculty, please contact the FCTL for a workshop on how to execute this online. Great. And, and she put her email in there too. Okay, great. Um, yeah, it was something, so in the, Voice our presentation I did. Um, I also sort of mentioned then as we were getting into um, you know remote learning, once you start you know delivering your lecture content, um, you know, where students homework really in preparation, 
you really have to start considering how are you using you know, any synchronous class um, because you know, once students see, okay, you know, this material can be delivered a different way that, you know, I have a lot easier access, you know, to at any, any time that I want, um, you know, I, and, and also, you know, in an accessible way that they can replay the information and kind of engage with, with it more deeply than what they can, you know, um, you know, if it's just delivered once and they're in the back of the room and, and don't kind of catch all of it, um, you know, then you really have to sort of consider, right, are you using class time as, a, as effectively as possible, you know? Um, so I wanted to just give, you know, a quick slide on, you know, how to, how to flip your classroom in terms of just some of the things that need to be considered. So like thinking about your pedagogical viewpoint and approach to teaching and I had actually a couple of other notes I wrote down I wanted to mention um, just in terms of that like it really thinking about you know how knowledge is acquired on a topic um, and how you can you know make connections between like what students are learning what they're expected to achieve um, you know how you can put students in charge of you know knowledge and discovery you know, acquisition of knowledge for themselves. Um, you want to consider both the content students are expected to know and also the skills they're expected to demonstrate because you want to really give them, you know, opportunities in the classroom for demonstrating those skills. Um, you really need to think about how you can create accountability. Um, provide practice opportunities is really important for any unfamiliar processes such as you know how students should be engaging in um, group roles I think actually before I go ahead to the next slide and um, can you remind me what time it is again Robin it's 1249 okay great so um, just to talk about my experience a little bit of, of doing flipped classrooms so um, I came to it via, I was in a graduate program at College Park and I was taking um, a pedagogy class and I'd already had a master's degree so I was teaching simultaneous to taking the pedagogy class which was really helpful because I could start sort of implementing things, you know, I was learning right away. Um, and I ended up um, the next term, well, during that term, I was doing research, you know, a literature review on um, using reading in the writing classroom. And I, I came across a scholar um, whose name is Mark Panek um, in, at University of Hawaii, who uh, was talking about, you know, how he set up groups in the room in order to achieve 100%, you know, participation rate among his students. And essentially I put that into practice um, started to the term you know in which I was learning about it and, and put it into full practice the next term in like a writing for health professions courses that I was teaching and um, so I, I basically set up student groups that were consistent you know all semester long um, so this can easily be you know done online um, as well and so that students could really get to know each other a lot, a lot better um, if they're in one consistent group, you know, it becomes like that team learning um, group. And I um, ended up, the, the important point in that, what the groups were for was for them to analyze the types of writings that they were expected to produce in the class. So if they're expected to write a literature, a health literature review, if they're expected to create um, a, some type of product, you know, related to healthcare, um, or any, you know, type of research, I gave them examples for them to prepare ahead of time and, you know, to read ahead of time and engage with ahead of time of those products that they were expected to produce. So literature review examples, um, health website examples, things like that. And they discussed it as a group, but they were given specific roles. So um, this fourth bullet here about like engaging in group roles, they were given very specific group roles 
that we're all different from one another. And this sort of creates like a, a peer pressure situation where they're responsible to one another. Um, and they would prepare ahead of time, you know, what are the questions we want to talk about in our group? What are the, um, you know, passages that we want to discuss as, you know, exemplars of, of good work? What do we want to critique? And so I ended up really only having to, um, you know, just serve as that kind of uh, person there to respond to questions because the students were all in the class doing the learning, you know, on their own, um, which was really helpful. But ahead of time, you know, I gave them a really low stakes practice opportunity for the group roles before, you know, they were ever expected to do it for real, um, which is an important uh, thing to me. So I wanted to really quickly just talk about, you know, what could applying the model online look like. So these are a couple of different, um, you know, things that, you know, I've, I've heard people at, you know, the School for Social Work kind of talking about in terms of like how to flip a classroom online. So for this first one, you know, students, um, the assignment is to create an advocacy product, like they have to create testimony to a legislative body or a newspaper op-ed or something else like that. Um, and basically, you know, that kind of um, assignment can be done, you know, exactly like what I, what I just talked about. Um, and, you know, in, and in terms of, you know, those, any synchronous time online can be used for, you know, group work, whereas any of the asynchronous time can be used for students to, you know, see the examples of these types of things. Um, and then also, you know, students expected to apply clinical skills in, in interaction with a patient. So that might be, you know, role playing, you know, that can be done um, peer to peer you know, online. If you have like a fully asynchronous class, for instance, you know, um, students might still have synchronous time, you know, with one another that they can set up where they, you know, in numerous tools, you know, and, and asynchronously, they can do it through voice thread where they're having, you know, interactions um, with one another. Um, but I don't know if there are, you know, maybe other, other ideas, you know, and if you want to put it in the chat, you know, I can certainly also follow up with people as well. If there are other ideas about, um, you know, assignments you have or topics, um, you know, or what you're teaching that you want to, you know, try and figure out about how to do as, as in a flipped model, you know, we can talk more about that. So here are a couple of slides too. And so um, a scholarly articles, um, you know, that we can send out just to mention, you know, so, you know, internal medicine, public health, um, there's some here on, you know, law related. Um, there's one here on social work that I found, but there are a lot of them. Um, I found a, a lot of different ones, but anyone have questions or comments or anything? I can stop sharing my screen so I can sort of engage a little more. There's nothing in chat. Okay. Great. Unless anybody wants to chat. <laughs> 